is another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. Perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling four seven five three zero zero three eight. Five zero. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850, 24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr., God bless you, and enjoy the message. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach, Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr., and... Uh, as a lawyer, we are going to get into a very, very powerful, powerful discussion tonight. Let me take off my slippers from standing on holy ground. 
<laughs> Praise God. Okay, this is this is going to be a very, very, very powerful discussion. I, I'd like to ask you to turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 9. Let me read the scriptures first. And for those of you that are wondering, what is he going to talk about tonight? It's going to be about deliverance. We are going to disarm Satan tonight. And by the grace of God, <laughs> this is going to be an expose on the enemy. He's going to be upset tonight. So some of you have been going through some things. Turn to Mark chapter 9. I'm in the King James Version. While you're doing that, some of you have been going through some things. And you've been wondering, how do I get out of this? You done went down every prayer line. Nothing worked. You done call on people to come and pray with you. Nothing changed. You done went to the ministry you go to and looking for a word and didn't get one. If you went on Sunday, it was so much Super Bowl that you, it, it, just, wasn't, it just wasn't worth the time. But right now, God is going to feed you. He has a word for you and you. And you, all right, and me, praise God, because I need to hear some things too. I'm covering my family in prayer. So I ask also that all of you that are watching by television and by Facebook Live, that you touch and agree with my family in prayer, my whole family, from the eldest to the youngest, from distant cousins to first cousins, immediate family. Just my, my family needs prayer. Just pray for my family and we this ministry touches and agrees with you and you also we pray for your family whatever you pray we just touch and agree with you that's going to be in a lesson too okay mark chapter 9 and i'm going to read uh from verses 14 through verse 29 a very familiar scripture often misused but uh tonight by the grace of god uh, there's going to be some light shed on it that hopefully is going to help you to understand what Jesus was talking about. Mark 9, starting at verse 14, and I'm in the King James Version, and it reads on this wise. And when he came, and I remember, when you see an italicized word, I'm going to emphasize it, because there's meat in there that God wants us to drain out of the text, all right? And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Write that down if you have your pad and paper. Dumb spirit. Okay? And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child, and oft, oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, right, unto him, Thou, dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciple asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind, now write this down, okay? 
Write this down. This kind, highlight it and underline it in your Bible. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Now jump to Matthew chapter 12 and let's notice four verses. Matthew 12, starting at verse 28 through 32. Jesus said, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Now notice this, verse 29. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house, write that down, strong man, enter into a strong man's house, you can write that word down too, house, and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, that's a question mark, and then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Okay? Now let's jump down to verse 43 and read to verse 45. Jesus, still talking, said, When the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he, write that down, he, a lot of people say, well, that demon it, or that spirit it. No, 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 no. Jesus said, when the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, still talking about that spirit, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Now I'll turn to Matthew 18 and 18, another, another very familiar passage of scripture. Um, yet still often misunderstood. Matthew 18, verse 18, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now let's read verses 19 and 20. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now let's jump to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. And then we're going to dive into this and get into this word. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. In the King James Version. Brother... John, the apostle, the one Jesus loved, the one that had his head on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper. The Lord told him to write, He that could, verse 8, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. For this reason, what reason? That he might destroy the works of the devil. I'm excited. Father, in Jesus' name, please bless this food. You already blessed it. It's, it's already an anointing on your word. The Bible preaches all by itself. Please bless our hearing and our understanding. Again, bless this food that we're about to receive. And, and, and thank you that it's nourishment to our soul. And let it be nourishment to our soul. Just like natural food 
is nourishment to our body. And we just thank you, Father, for the platter thou hast set before us. Again, I decrease. Please let me decrease. Please, that you may increase. Allow me to step back and you step forward and you do the teaching and use thine own servant. Let the tongues fly and the prophecies go. Let questions be answered. Let some people that are in the need of prayer be encouraged. Let some situations change after this lesson. And let this information be vital to the need of your people. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. <sighs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's, let's start at the book of Mark and let's dissect that because that is, that's our base text. And from the book of Mark, everything that we just read is all connected. In chapter 9 of the book of Mark, the early part of that chapter, Jesus took his inner circle disciples, Peter, James, and John. He took them to a high mountain, just him and them, and he was transfigured in front of them. They saw the Lord uh, in his glory. Not only that, but also there appeared unto him Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Now, there's a few things that Elijah and Moses had in common when you read about them. Uh, even in the book of Revelation, it is stated and pointed to the fact that these are going to be those two witnesses that Scripture talks about. But if you go back and read about them, you'll see that Elijah was translated, just taken straight to heaven. And Moses was buried in a place that only God knew because God was the one that buried him. So his disciples got to see this, which also tells us that God is the God of the living and not the dead. You know, when a person leaves this world and they're born again, they rest before God as scripture states. Now, it's a lot of people just throwing people in heaven when they leave this world because they don't see them suffer here. They assume that they're in a better place because they see that the body is lifeless. But there was a sermon the Lord led me to minister some years ago on television, and it was called Oh, you will live forever. You, everyone is going to live forever. But where you're going to live forever is on you. If you are born again, then you will live forever with the Lord in heaven. But if you're unsaved, then you shall live forever in the lake of fire, burning forever and ever and ever. Eternal punishment. Now, people could get upset there's some people that say, well, you can't say that. Well, the Bible says it. And praise God for reading because Scripture reveals this to us. It's very important to understand that. Now, the disciples saw Jesus in his glory. They saw him demonstrating his deity, his authority, his power. And after they saw all of this and asked them some questions, we come to verse 14 of Mark 9, where he came to the other nine of the disciples. And when he came, he saw, Scripture says, a great multitude <laughs> talking to them. And the scribes, you know who the scribes were. Scribes were like if you were, uh, if you, if, if you, scribes wrote what you said. That's what they did. And they were also called teachers of the law. 
the scribes were asking these brothers questions. And when the people saw Jesus come up, when they saw him, they were amazed. Now that's deep. Because remember, he just got finished being transfigured. So the, the, uh, the, there's a lot of people that want to separate God the Father from Jesus Christ. And I like the way we read in Matthew chapter 18 where Jesus said, two, two of you gather together, no touching. Uh, I don't want to misquote it. If um, two, Scripture says, of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So there's a lot of people that separate God the Father from God the Son and say that they're not the same person. But if you look in John chapter 14, verse 13, Jesus said, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. So in one passage of Scripture, it says the Father would do it. In another passage of Scripture, Jesus is saying he will do it. Now, there's many scriptures that prove that Jesus is God and that they are not separate. So it's very important that we understand who Jesus is so that that way we can receive the benefit of seeing him move in our life. You will not be able to defeat the devil if you don't know who Jesus is. Now, it just so happens that the thought that God gave me for this lesson is called when you disarm the devil. Now, let me stop for a minute because when the Lord lead me to say the thought is where I get that from is I ask God when he's giving me a word and he tell me to write down information. A lot of times like now I don't have no sermon but I have a lot of definitions written down because I can't remember everything in the Greek and the Hebrew that the Lord blessed me to take in and retain. I can retain it but sometimes it's a lot of information. Anyway, when the Lord told me to write, I said, Lord, what is the thought? What, what are you thinking? You want me to write something. What, you want me to, to use me as a vessel to relay something to your people. What are you thinking? And then he tells me the the heading, the overall point of the lesson. And that is when you disarm the devil with God's word, then you win. A lot of people put emphasis on prayer. That's good because, again, like we talked about a few nights ago, prayer is part of the armor of God, part of it. You pray, that's that's your that's, that's that's you speaking what God tells you to speak in the spirit of the realm because you have to agree with God so that the blessing of God is released into the earth realm. But before he can release it and before you can agree, you have to know what his will is. And the only way you find out his will is to get in his word because his word is his will and his will is in his word. They are not separate. So. God said, when you disarm the devil with God's word, then <laughs> you win. Now, then I said, okay, Lord, praise God, praise your name for the thought. But what is the title? What, what, what is the title of the message? And here's what he told me. Catch this revelation. To get rid of your STD, you need God's anointing. To get rid of your STD, you need God's anointing. Now, there's a lot of people that say, well, I don't have an STD. We know in the world, STD is sexually transmitted disease, but that's not what God is saying. S here is for spiritually, T is for transmitted, and D is for demon. In order to get rid of your spiritually transmitted demon, you need God's anointing. The devil will not move unless the anointing kicks in. The Bible says that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. <laughs> Why do you think when the devil saw Jesus, he had a fit? Because of the anointing. Why do you think when Jesus came out of the tomb and Mary went to grab him and he said, touch me not? Because of the anointing. 
the anointing that it took to raise this body that was in the grave for three days. The body was in the grave for three days, but Jesus had went in the center of the earth for three days and three nights and came back, got in the tomb, got in that body and rose. The Holy Ghost, he is God and he is called the Spirit of Christ. If you were to turn to the book of Colossians, and if you were to notice chapter 3, no, chapter 2, verse 9, you would read where it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So we know now, when examining who Jesus is, that according to his, 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 his mother's side, Mary, he comes from David also, from David's lineage, but through Nathan. That was his mother's side, through Nathan. But on Joseph's side, which Joseph wasn't his father, he was his stepfather, but the word didn't use step, but on that side, he come from the royal side, after David, through Solomon, through Solomon. Solomon on Joseph's side, Nathan on Mary's side. So part of Jesus, Jesus was 100% man and, that's, that's the flesh, man, his, his flesh was human, and he was 100% God. Now, hold that for a minute, because knowing that, it's important to understand that when he demonstrated human traits, it was because he chose to. When he demonstrated his godly traits, it was because he chose to. There's no one else but him that is 100% God and 100% man. That's why he understood everything the Father was saying because inside that human body, the Father was inside there. If you were again to turn with me to the book of Matthew, and if you were to turn to... Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 1, verse 21, where the angel told Joseph that Mary shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The name Jesus meant Savior. It means Savior. The Christ, that's not his last name, but the Christ means anointed one. So if you were to translate his name, it would be the Savior, the Anointed One, or Salvation, the Anointed One. And then Scripture says in verse 22, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now, it's not God is with us because that would have meant his presence, but God with us meant that this <laughs> was God. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, no, verse 8, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. We'll be satisfied. You've been talking about the Father all this time we've been with you. Show us the Father. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? In other words, he's saying, I've been with you all this time, and you still don't know who I am? Well, how can I ask me to show you the Father? I've been with you all this time. Then he said, verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So remember, Colossians says, In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God the Father, God the Holy Ghost was in God the Son. In John, again, chapter 4, if you notice verse 24, when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, he said, God is a spirit, capital S. 
he is the Holy Ghost. And they that worship him, worship God, must worship him, God, in spirit, meaning in your spirit, and in truth, which if you turn real quick to John chapter 17, I hope you got a pad to write all this down. If you turn to John chapter 17, and you notice verse 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So here's what he's saying. God the Father is looking for those to worship him from their spirit according to what? The word of God. This is the only truth. The word of God. And the devil know that. That's why he made all these other books. The Quran, the, the Mormon uh, Bible, which is the uh, Book of Mormon. Uh, the Christian Science Book. And, and all, all of this stuff the devil put together. Why? To throw people off. It's important that you know who Jesus is. Because if you don't know who he is, listen, you could go to every building in the world that 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 they supposedly call God's house. But if Jesus is not there, then, then there's nothing there for you. It doesn't make any sense that ministers put so much time on all these activities and yet give you 15 minutes of word looking at their watch saying, I got to go. I'm not going to hold you long. No, no, no. Hold them. Because there's a lot of people watching this broadcast right now, and you know, I know I do, need deliverance from something. We got prayers on the altar. We need the Lord to move in some area of our life. The club is open more times than the house of God. And the ministers beat you up with giving. You know, they, they scare you. If you don't pay your tithes, you're going to hell. And that's not true because in the Hebrew, the Hebrew word for tithe T, is not T-I-D-E, not tithe. It's tithe, T-I-T-H-E. And the Hebrew word is mahazra. And what that means is a tenth. So imagine if you have 10 $1 bills and you say, well, I'm going to tithe. This $10. That don't mean you give the whole thing. That means you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The tenth one. That's the tithe of the tenth. That's what you share if God tell you to share it. That's another thing. Can nobody tell you what to share in the offering? In order for a minister to say that you have given a tenth of your income, they have to know what you make, which is no one's business but you and God. Don't be deceived, brethren. And in the Old Testament, when God said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, he said that there may be meat. And in the Hebrew, that means food. That means something tore off or something. So if you had a big chicken wing or a big chicken and you tore the wing off, you bring that, put it in the storehouse. Why? So that if a person have a need, there's something in the storehouse for them. You have to read Nehemiah chapter 9 and 10 to understand when God said you're cursed with a curse, what he meant. A lot of ministers can't tell you what the curse was because they don't know. I'll give you a clue. In Nehemiah chapter 10, when they put together a petition so God could get them out of bondage, get them out of Babylon, and bring them back to their land to build up Jerusalem and build up the temple, Nehemiah said, we signed this, we entered into this agreement by an oath and a curse. What was the curse? If we don't keep what we're telling you we're getting ready to do, what we're getting ready to write, if we don't keep our word, then deal with us any way you choose to. And that's why God dealt with them in Malachi about them not keeping their part of the bargain. Read it when you get the chance. Get into the word. Now, so, so here's Jesus coming up. The people saw him in Mark 9. And when they saw him, <laughs> they ran to him and saluted him. And in verse 16, he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? He said to the scribe, what are you talking to them about? What's up? What do you need to know? 
And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Now I'm going to write this down in case some of you haven't. Write this down. Follow my example. Dumb spirit. Now we've already determined and deduced from reading Matthew 12 that spirits are not its. Demons are not its. Angels are not its. They are not human beings, but they are a company of beings. They have emotion, intellect, and will. They have the three things that constitute personhood. Okay, so uh, this father told Jesus, my son, I brought you, my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And that means he can't talk. Now, this is deep. This is very deep. Hold that thought, though. In verse 18, he said, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. Notice he's saying he, because he's talking about that spirit. That dumb spirit, that spirit that can't talk. Whenever he, he said, whenever he taketh him, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. That means throw him all over the place. And he foameth, meaning he foam at the mouth, and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away, which means withering away as if he's dead. Like he's not, he'd be thrown all over the place, then he can't move. He's still, he pineth away. He's withering away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 19 says, He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Jesus is saying, Y'all don't get it yet. It's, a lot, it's funny how people think Jesus was so passive. He wasn't. He wasn't. See, listen, when God has done stuff for you, and brought you out of things, and delivered you from things, and blessed you with things. When God has shown you that he is with you, that he loves you, and that he is able to do everything but fail, and then you go through something again, and you, you, you don't know what to do, God says, how long? I mean, what, what do I have to do for you to get it? See, when God does something, listen, catch this revelation. When God does stuff for us and bring us out, next time we go through our next trial, we're supposed to stop, look at that and say, listen, I don't know how he's going to do it. He did it before. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. He's going to bring me out again. I don't know how he did it. I don't know when. Me and my sister, she's an evangelist, my sister uh, Linda. And, and oftentimes when we talk, you know, we'll, we'll have this thing where this, we, we get in this conversation, we always say, when? <laughs> when? Meaning, when is God going to move when we're going through something that we, and the Lord do bless us to have a moment to talk? That's what we ask each other. When is God going to move? How long? I mean, gee, we waiting on God, and, and the Lord knows that we need him to move. We, he knows that we need him to do something. When? <laughs> when? And that's good because that shows that we are hoping for something. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of having faith is that you can't see it. But you're hoping for something that you know God is going to do. Why? For two reasons. One, because he told you he would do it. And two, because you know he can do it. He said, oh, faithless generation, <laughs> how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, this is so funny because as the Lord allowed me to read this over the years and the teaching on it over the years, Every time he allowed me to read it, he allowed me to see something, and it, it kind of tickles me. I can just imagine him standing there and saying, oh, <laughs> faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Bring him here. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wild old foaming. Now this, this you got to catch this. This 
child, this, which he wasn't no little boy. Cause, and the, re, the reason we know that, well, we'll see it in a minute, but he wasn't no little boy. He was a grown man. And this demon that was in him, which as it turns out, there was two demons in him and one that was over his life. We're going to see that too. So what happened was this demon, when he saw Jesus straightway, when the, when the, boy, when the man eyes hit Jesus and he saw Jesus and all that anointing, all that glory, all of that godliness touched his eyes and it registered that demon that was inside of him, he went berserk. He went bananas. He saw him and straightway the spirit tear him, threw him all over the place and he fell on the ground and wallowed for him. Now he going crazy. And verse 21, this is so funny. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. So we know that he wasn't a child when this was going on. He was a grown man. But here's another one of those times when the Lord allowed me to see something. It was just kind of funny. It tickled me when the Lord blessed me to read this. Is that while the demon was throwing him around, I could see, I'm not, I wasn't there. So I, I'm just saying, you know, sometimes God will allow you to, to, to see something that only God wants you to see so that you'll understand something about his character. So I'm, I'm as, as the Lord blessed me to read this, I'm, I'm looking and I can see in the spirit and just imagine Jesus being cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> just step, bring him to me. They bring him. And the, the, the boy, the man look at him and the demon throw him all over the place. And now he's on the floor. And I could imagine Jesus looking down and just looking at, <laughs> looking at this. The boy being thrown all over the place. You notice in our situations when we're going through stuff, the only one calm is Jesus. We'd be going crazy. Oh, Lord, I, 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 I'm running out of time. I don't know what to do. Lord, this is too much. Lord, help me, Lord. What you going to do? What you going to do? And sometimes God don't even speak. And we're like, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yes, he hear you. See, First John, turn it with me real quick. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says these words, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So when we're praying and we know what his words say and we're praying his word to him, he hears us. Now look at verse 15. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. We know it. See, that's big boy stuff. That's, that's what separates the, 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 the men from the boys spiritually and the women from, from the girls spiritually and the adults in the spirit from children, from babies in Christ. Is that you know, when you know what the words say, you, you deal with things a lot different than everybody else do. You deal with sickness different than everybody else do. Why? Because you know for this reason, 1 John 3 and 8, the Son of Man was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. He came and said, it's a wrap. Satan, your time is over. You're not going to be throwing my people around no more. You're not going to do that. I could see him just standing there, looking at this boy being thrown all over the place. And then he looked at the father. <laughs> How long have you been going through this? Oh, since he was a child. <laughs> and all times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything... Have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, verse 23, If thou canst believe. Now he's talking about if you can believe. See, we're asking God to do stuff, right? He'll do it. But if you, you're saying, Lord, if, if you could just do this. If you, first of all, if you say, Lord, if you can do this, that means you don't know him. You need to get with somebody that know him. But when you do know him, you know he can do it. And the Lord is saying to you, he's saying to you, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, there's some things that is not going to change in our life. Yes, we know it's, it's, the, the word says it. And, and let's just be honest. Some of us have too much blood or too much wrong, or too much dirt on our hands for God to do certain things. What do you mean, Apostle? Well, we're too high-minded to look at ourselves and to see what we do wrong 
that hinders or block the prayer life or the prayer request that we're bringing before God. Sometimes we block our own stuff and don't even know it. If you got if you got a gossiping problem, you blocking your own stuff. If you're selfish, you blocking your own stuff. If you know, uh, thank you, Lord. There's something that God had had given me. Oh, where's that paper at? Uh, there was a there was a. a, a Something that the Lord led me to write down. I was studying it. And it said, if you're holding back something that's for somebody that you got and it belonged to them and you holding it back, you're holding back what's due to them. You're blocking your own prayer. You, a lot of people, even when they pray, they just, Father, in Jesus' name, blah, 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 blah. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. First John, chapter 1. Notice I'm standing in the word. That way you can't say Brother Coleman is saying anything. First John chapter 1 verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now look at verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So now let's look at something because there's a lot of people that say the Bible contradicts itself and it doesn't. It, it, it's just everything just not put in ABC order. For instance, in Romans 3, there's none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Then in the book of James chapter 5, it says, the effectual forever prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So now if Romans says, if the Lord said in Romans, there's none righteous, no, not one, and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then in, James, in the book of James, the Lord's brother James wrote that the effectual fervent prayer for righteous men availeth much. That's, that would seem like something is missing. It would seem contradictory. Lord, how can the effectual fervent prayer for righteous men availeth much if there's none righteous, no, not one? That's it right there. That's the missing piece. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then also in the book of James, chapter 5, there's something else that a lot of people miss and some that don't miss it don't understand it. James chapter 5, when it talks about healing, verse 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What do you mean confess your faults one to another? In other words, if you've done something to someone, you need to go to them and confess that. You, you need to get it right. How is God going to bless you? He said, I will not withhold any good thing from those that walk upright before him. How is God going to bless you with what you're praying for and you walking around dirty? Come clean. If you listen, come clean. Come clean. Come clean. Come clean. God said, come clean. Get rid of your, your STD, your spiritually transmitted demon. Get rid of it. That lying spirit, get rid of it. That spirit of gossip, get rid of it. That selfish spirit, get rid of it. That hoarding spirit, get rid of it. That greedy spirit, get rid of it. That, that my, my, my spirit, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Because God can't move if you holding all this mess. He can't move. He can't move. He's not going to move. It's, it's just not, it's not going to happen. You're wondering why the Lord is not moving. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not God. It's, it's not God. Sometimes it's us. It's not God. And the enemy, he's not always messing with us either. He's not. Sometimes the enemy use you against you. See, if, you, if you're not, if you're not going to let God use you to, to come clean, then the devil know oh, I ain't got to do nothing because you're doing it yourself. Some of you are going against demons that you know nothing about, and yet and still you're trying to go against them. And you're wondering, 
Listen, if I had to go into a spiritual battle and I didn't know what the will of God was, I would call somebody that I know. And everybody who say, I know the Lord, or everyone who go to some place of worship every Sunday, every Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, that don't mean that they know the Lord. Don't mean that at all. Some of them pastors are masons. You know they don't know God because in order to be a 30th degree mason, you have to take an oath that say Lucifer is God. So those of y'all who got masons in the ministry, be careful because they're tainting the ministry. So God is not, the, listen, if the devil can walk up in the place that's called the house of God and sit there and chill, God's not there. How you say that, apostle? Well, look at the scriptures. Soon as this man, <laughs> verse 30, 20, uh, uh, Mark 9, verse 20, and they, and they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him. That demon went off when he saw Jesus. The devil can't come up in Jesus' house and sit there and relax. He can't do it. He can't do it. Gay people in the ministry. And the pastor talk about God is here. No, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> Lesbians in the pulpit. And they say God is here. No, he's not. God is letting some people go ahead and go through the motions. Why? Because if God was to tell you change, listen, let, let's go deeper than that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord said to say this. He knew who was going to say yes, Lord, before you came in this world. Some of you, he's allowing you to go through the motions just so that you can leave this world and get what you got coming. You, you don't believe it. Romans chapter 1. Chapter 1, uh, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That means who lie. Who take the truth and lie about it. Twist scripture and everything. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorify him, not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart were darkened. That's spiritual darkness. And the sin of omission is when they omit the thing about God. They didn't glorify him. They omitted glorify him. Omit means to take out. They omitted glorify him. But they said, I know God. I read my Bible. I go to church. But how you living? This scripture says, verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Scripture says God also gave them up to that. He let them do it. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Watch this. Who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men having the natural, excuse me, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Meaning that what they get, they get. They get. God made male and female for reproduction. There is no way two men could reproduce. Look what the devil did. Now he reaches in and broken uh, 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 um, um, the places where, where orphans are. Abandoned children. And he takes them and put them in a home where two men raise them or two women. And God is not happy. He's not happy about it. Not at all.
I tell you, that's that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life will be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table. Sad.